Do welcome to uh, my my podcast. Uh, I go by the Thai channel called Jai Waves because you would have seen. And I've recently started this long form thing, and I'm super grateful that I got you on on a call and got a chance to chat with you. And when I sent you that Instagram DM, I was hoping it could go through all the traffic that you you know normally you would get. Um, so yeah, I'm super grateful, and uh, honestly, I'm getting goosebumps right now just <laughs> being in the call with you. <laughs> Cause nothing, yeah. nothing that major, bro. It's, I'm, I'm just a pretty regular guy. Uh, yeah, you know, like you taking the step to actually send someone a DM to uh, get them on your shows shows how interested you are, how committed you are to your uh, craft. So yeah, kudos to that. Thanks, man. So yeah, but just to give you a background, I'm I'm a I'm a photographer, videographer. Uh, is mm-hmm. what I'm a I freelance during my Saturdays and Sundays as a um photographer videographer and also late nights uh, and I do have a you know traditional 9 to 5 as well which I love and I adore yep um so yeah that's where I stand and um, I think most of the people who are watching my videos and who know you know as the person who came the Sri Lankan who came on Dragons Den um, yeah. um and I'm sure you've you know answered so many questions about uh, that but the real reason that I wanted to get people like you and you know the people that I've spoken about is that mm. I've 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 been in a very uh, fortunate place to or privileged place to be at interviews to interview people uh, and yeah. to hire people for work. Um, yeah. And the thing that I see the most is people have this really negative attitude towards you know uh, to having a job or you know working, yeah. um, which yeah. essentially for me personally, I found it to be liberating to work and you know to have. And I feel like it's it's part of the mindset. And mm-hmm. what I really wanna you know try and get uh, is where um, people like you, where your mindset started, and what are the decisions that you made. So right. let's go all the way back. To school, okay. right? I know you. You're, you're yeah. a Thomian. Um, yeah. Traditionally, because I know you, even though you're living in Toronto right now, traditionally Sri yeah. Lankan parents, what they do is, um, what's your doctor, lawyer, engineer plan, right? <laughs> that's what. Right. Yeah, that's yeah. what uh, puts this whole ethos into our minds. And I know you lost your dad at a very young age, if yeah. I'm not mistaken. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. Correct. So, what was it like um, at home for you? Like, what? What was your direction given to you by the people around you, especially as a Sri Lankan kid? My so after my so obviously I didn't get you know uh, to grow up with my dad. I lost him when I was eight years old. So oh wow, yeah, I, I miss I, I miss the whole you know growing up with the mm-hmm. dad part. So like my mom was my dad though. Like so, mm-hmm. but my mom wasn't like a traditional traditional Sri Lankan parent. She didn't really tell me what to do, but there was right. a part of her. You know, where she looked at other kids around like the same age and, you know, compare me to like other kids my age and be like, oh, okay, this one is like first in class. Like, why are you like the sixth in class? I think that's a traditional, right. like, you know, Sri right, Lankan right, right. mentality. And I think yeah. my O-level results were, I think we did 10 subjects. It was five Ds, five Cs. So she's like, okay, why, why didn't you do better kind of thing? But she wasn't right. like, it, it wasn't in a bad way. I feel like um, her generation or like our, our parents' generation, they thought that's the, they, they probably thought that's the way to motivate kids. Um, right. And my mom didn't, you know, my mom didn't study abroad or she didn't get that exposure at an early age to um, mm-hmm. kind of, see the world for what it is because even the western world back in the day would have been more progressive than the sri lankan world back right. in the day so so right. she, she didn't she didn't she didn't get that exposure so like obviously i don't bl- blame like any of our parents who mm-hmm. try to be like okay this is the direction that you take because mm-hmm. i think it's lack of education or lack of like social norms to be like right. okay um right. your kid can be the world is your oyster and your kid can be whoever the hell he wants to be in the world kind of thing mm-hmm. but they but, but they limited to your like traditional accountant lawyer doctor kind of thing so but my, my my mom didn't didn't ask me to you know you know this is the path you should take because i i studied my degree was in uh software engineering and when i wanted oh, wow. to uh yeah i don't know shit about <laughs> software engineering though but it, it was just one of those things right like you have so many few avenues like you have your like business management thing you have your software engineering or whatever um so all my friends 
did that so that's what i wanted to do so i didn't finish my so i started my london a levels um that was the first time st thomas's had london a levels in right what was this 2001 i graduated in 2000 uh, i left school in 2001 though my a level year should have been 2002 so i'm right. like so i i think i was different from back in the day i'm like why would i cuz i always wanted to study abroad and mm-hmm. i think um so luckily for me unlike other kids um my 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 dad was smart enough to save for my education before he passed away so my mom oh, didn't okay. you know right. so my mom didn't have to go through the whole she did go through the whole sing, single parent thing no, like of course, she of brought course. me up she was an entrepreneur herself she you know you know she had a few rental businesses all that like in at a very small scale um right. but then she didn't have to worry about like saving up for my education because my dad had already done that so I'm, i'm i'm pretty fortunate in that way i wouldn't say privileged but I, i'm 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 fortunate in that way so right. um uh when when i when i wanted to not do my london a levels or not finish doing my london a levels um i i always thought to myself okay i wanted to study abroad um so it, I, even back in the day i did some research and i'm like how important is a levels to study abroad kind of thing right yeah. so yeah. i'm like if i have if i if i finish a a degree program like the first year in sri lanka and then would that be good enough to for me to get accepted into a foreign university and then I go finish my degree while other kids are finishing their A levels kind of thing right, right? so it, it took 4 years but like I'm actually much ahead of them like a, a year ahead of them technically um so that's what I decided to do so my mom's like no 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 finish your A levels all that I'm I'm like no no I'm going to do this this is what I wanted to do so 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 that's the that that's the point I think that's a good thing about my mom she didn't pressurize me into doing whatever she wanted so she's like okay it's it's your life so if you want to do if you want to quit a levels and do your own thing um right. do it kind of thing so so i think i was pretty fortunate I, this is a good this is a good this is a good area because i've never talked about like this in like any of my interviews so yeah. that's good that's good yeah. um so you've done your research good. yes i have <laughs> uh, yeah so i i went to england to do my bachelor so i studied at apic mm-hmm. for uh oh, okay 2001 to 2002 so this is like old apic not like the not like the hosh posh new well, yes <laughs> i guess back in the day it was hosh posher than now because i think now mm. it's more commercialized right yeah back it is, in the it day is. we had nine batches it was app it was in access towers like 9th or 12th oh wow. it's, it's, it's pretty right. small um yeah. and uh, i think yeah i i think app it back I, i don't know about now but back then it was very it was a very exclusive kind of private school okay right um or, or university or whatever you may call it mm-hmm. um mm-hmm. so then i go to england um start l- so it, so this is so i'm an only child too um, so i'm i'm a little bit spoiled at home because i think right. this is the experience <laughs> like every kid needs to like mm. go out of the country and like try and figure out how to live their life because you get like so much experience and exposure where right. you won't get like just sitting at home like you know your parents feeding you till your third right 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 so yeah. luckily for me like uh i that happened and i had the chance to go abroad and kind of figure out my life to be like oh i'm like i'm i'm still terribly disorganized like all my documents right. are everywhere but i i know where to find what i need when i need to right, find something right, right, right. Um, so so it, so it was it was pretty stuff like you know I, i didn't know how to cook like all that so go to england um mm-hmm. do the whole four year degree come back to sri lanka I, I, if you want to interrupt me at any point please do um, no, no no please yeah i guess yeah come please go this is yeah. um come to sri lanka to actually because my mom was alone so I've, i've been out of the country for four years so i'm like okay let me okay. before i because i didn't want to do my degrees go do a post grad right away so i'm like let me spend some time with my mom in sri lanka uh mm. blow off some steam because four years abroad is yeah like, you know you don't get your sri lankan food and all that so sorry so, so how uh, just in terms of how old were you when you uh left when you started doing things on your own uh so 20 so i'm talking 2002 2003 is when i uh went to england so eight, okay. so 20 years so 20 oh wow wow yeah i mean I, I, 20 I, or 21 <laughs> i just turned 20 yeah. i probably just turned 20 yeah just turned 21 yeah. or 20 yeah. Yeah. i yeah, i yeah. left to england in 2003 so that's 20 right, um right. also yeah so 20 okay. 20 to 20 so no I, i wasn't there for four years i was there for six because i come back in 2007 Right. So uh, yeah, for four years, 2003 2004 is okay. 2007 is 
four years. Okay. Okay. Uh, was there for four years. Finished that. Mm-hmm. Come back to Sri Lanka. Um, thinking my degree or my experience mm-hmm. would be would get some kind of validation in Sri Lanka. Right. Right. Um, right. Yeah. That's that's but I, that's that's the assumption that everybody like has like immediately like. Uh, oh, immediately, like you, you yeah. will be like you will be in like a big position and get a good salary. Right? Right, that's yeah. it's not how it works because yeah. <laughs> the Sri Lankan workforce has its own politics, right? Like mm. your own system. So you yes. come back from England, you had to start. Like I'm like, what the? Can I swear on this podcast? Yeah, you can. You can oh, no. definitely. Yeah, you can. I'm like, what the fuck? Like I, yeah. I, I have to start from the bottom again. Like right. that's not gonna work for me. So I I, I took mm-hmm. a I took a job at this telecommunication company for the time being, mm-hmm. you know, because I wasn't doing anything at all. And and that whole entrepreneur mindset hadn't probably kicked in. It had kicked in, but I didn't know it had kicked in. Right. Mm-hmm. So uh, my friends and I, because I knew like this income is like nothing for me. I would go out twice a week and I would blow my whole salary up. Right. right. So, right. And, and 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 I was like pretty young. I was what like twenty. 526 and like right. I was you know I was in those like party mm-hmm. like go out yes, three times a yeah. night kind of thing and um <laughs> so so I'm like yeah I, I need to figure something out like let's figure something out in uh in in kind of like a place or in an area that I really like which is like okay I go out to clubs and I, and I party so why don't I start like you know putting together parties kind of thing mm-hmm. so we started this company called two, two two of my friends and I got together started this company called Asylum Corp and we started oh, okay. promoting um like electro house and like right. techno and all that. that's that was the all, the rage back in the day like like this, did they have any connection with the cl- club asylum or the no 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 this is... was, didn't even it I was. Ex- I'm not sure. I don't think it even existed back in. Right. The day. Right. right. Um, okay. Okay. So we used to host events at places like Club Nouveau was. I think Taj Samudra or uh, that was Club Nouveau. I don't know what it's called now. Uh, right. So this is before the whole. I don't know how old 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 you were. You must be like 21, 22. No, I'm 29 actually. So oh, okay. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, so right. you probably. I don't know if you remember this. Like when the be- whole beach party explosion happened and the, yeah. the whole beach party. Kind of. This is before the whole beach party thing was went choka, right? Right, right, uh, right, right, right. So right, we right. we yeah. we were kind of like the first, I'd say, five uh, companies to start organizing beach parties and stuff. Right. Like, I remember back right. uh, back in the day there was like uh, Shyam DJ Shyam's company. Uh, I can't remember okay. for the life of me what it what, what it is. Then there was another right. couple called Angie and someone else and Tim Offshore Life. Uh, mm, they used mm. to do parties. I remember, and, and, yeah. Like, Tim, Tim and them used to do it in like a major scale. They used to spend right. a lot of money. We were kind of like yeah. the, I'd say the budget version of that. Like we, you okay. know, we'll 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 bring all the performers together. We'll put like we'll do like an awesome show, but mm-hmm. all the shenanigans like Tim and them had with like the great lighting and like the oh, the, yeah. the ten foot like offshore sign. Like we didn't yeah. have all that. Like Tim, <laughs> Tim, Tim, because. Yeah. I think even back in the day, he was like forty years old, and he was he's been in the industry for like twenty plus years at the time. Right. So he had the experience. So he, to, he actually, has they the had the experience. Right. So we were we were pretty much newbies, like try like testing out waters. Mm. That company after like, like a few years that didn't work out um, with the partners, so we we kind of dissolved the company, um, and then. That's how, that's that's the beginning. Otherwise, right. I'm like I'm yeah. just talking, and you're not you're not yeah. asking. Yeah, no, this is this is interesting because because for me, like I think I think the way a lot of people, right, especially uh, are struggling, is um, they forget how things start. You know how one mm. thing leads to the other, and then which is why I ask this question, especially because for me, um, when a lot of people that I meet, especially like people, our parents are the first ones we see. You know. We know that where they right. started from, and that's what inspires. Yeah. And then we go on TV, yeah. and then we see, and even right. with you, like a lot of people see, you know, right, what's happening now, um, mm-hmm. and then it's very difficult to understand how what led you to make those decisions. And that's what I want to yeah. try and you know, um, yeah. get into. And now, so we, I'm like over the moon. <laughs> But I, I, I got all of that uh, really fast. Okay, so. So when you came back, right? You said I think you yeah. uh, you also wanted to do your masters, right? As in that's yeah. that's what uh, led you to go. Yeah, to I, I, I always valued education. Like mm-hmm. I, uh, my 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 mindset or my thoughts about education is not the yeah. same now. Yeah. Uh, right. But I think I think yeah, everyone needs yeah. 
because there has been a shift right 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 now everybody's harping about how education is failing them especially primary education because like, education is expensive bro it just got right. like so fucking expensive kids can't afford mm. it like even in these countries right even in these countries it got so expensive and like mm-hmm. once you come out of university you're in debt i don't give the fucking point in that like what's 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 the point in that like you right. shouldn't be in debt like education should education should be affordable Mm-hmm. for everyone right. and right. accessible yeah. for everyone right like that okay make- like rich kids rich kids have money to spend because they have their parents money like in sri lanka right because most mm. of the time your parents if if your parents are well off your parents pay for you but here mm. or like in western countries anyone who who's lived in western countries here to like certain certain ethnicities they have like their college funds there for their kids or whatever but like you traditional like white people mm. or whatever they're like okay you're 16 or you're 18 you're out you're on your own figure it out so they, <laughs> yeah. so they get they go get government as, government assistance which in canada is called osap and okay. which is t- technically a loan um right. to, in canada it's not as bad as the us um there's okay. a good there's a there's a good episode i don't know if you watch um uh, hasan minaj uh, just a uh, netflix show no um, I, i don't know what you should check it out it's, I'll, I'll it's pretty good it, yeah. there's a good there's a good episode on uh, like us um student mm-hmm. loans that's the okay. way i learned this stuff from right. too so canada it's not that bad but you still have to pay back what you owe the government so most kids right. what they do is they take osap and they party with it and like at the end of the day then like you're at a loss right like right yeah it, it's money you can do whatever the hell you want with it but that's not the the purpose it serves right yeah. um i forgot where were we where, where yeah. We were. yeah yeah so when you want you went to canada did your masters and then how long yeah. were you there before dragons didn't happen like what was okay that? so i I come to Canada in 2011. You, went, you were you were involved in film uh, as well, right? Yes. For, for so 2011 while. I do my postgrad uh, studies in film and TV marketing, right. uh, specializing in kids TV. So back in the day I was uh, for Canada I was in charge of uh, I was in the team that worked on Peppa Pig. Uh, right. I was in charge of most of the Treehouse properties, um uh, Paw Patrol, all of those stuff. Um mm-hmm. then I was part of the team that uh you know uh, i i worked on movies like the hunger games and all that like on the marketing side um okay. and and a lot of shitty independent films as well um right. so we worked for the us team for okay. so i worked for a company called e1 uh and uh so i worked for e1 for five five e1 and it's um, so uh, i originally worked for a company called face for films which got bought over by e1 so th- right. those are the minuscule details right okay. um yeah. I yeah. work work for work for them for 5 years. Uh I get laid off. Yeah, I actually that's yeah, story. let me interrupt you there. That's yeah. that's like a point where I really want to like harp because I I I yeah. I heard in one of your conversations that you already had like a shitty boss, right? Um, oh yeah, Michael Ross. You yeah. <laughs> Okay. Yeah, and I, uh, I I I linked his LinkedIn profile to one of my videos. I pinned the oh, thing wow. and I'm like <laughs> I'm like don't go attack him but like you know because I started doing this podcasting um, and, um so I upload episodes on YouTube yeah. as well because that's kind mm-hmm. of like what Sri Lankans are used to like watching stuff on YouTube. So right, it's like yeah. okay, it's a podcast but if you want want the audio version you go to your Apple podcast or whatever. So I, yeah. I this morning I pinned like his profile and said <laughs> oh, wow. you guys want to see put a put a uh, you know put a face to the name this guy is my cousin oh, wow. attack him. <laughs> yeah, well, that's interesting. Yeah. Um so let's talk about cuz I know I'm pretty sure you have faced so much of rejection, right? And mm-hmm. I know but even though this particular job The fact that you got laid out didn't come to you as a devastating blow because you were planning on quitting mm. anyway. Um, yes. How do like how do people get over rejection or how did you you know become numb to it? Because uh, mm. you have to be able to get over it. Like like what was your your secrets or so? How what did you figure out? Like so for me, it was very different because mm. I at that point I loved mm. my job for four years, uh, right. but then. when i started working under michael that's when i started hating hating my job right, right so i'm like right. okay i need i i need to get out of this hell like that's what i've i've been planning and mm. i i had the idea for sneak it up like even before i quit but i just couldn't execute it because you know like i, I used to I, i used to live in the suburbs back in the day so okay. four hours back and forth to work like i've been oh I, wow I, you know, I, yeah Because yeah. like traffic was so bad, so the only way you could get there is you take a train, which is like an hour and a half oh, door wow. to door. So like three hours to four hours on the road hmm. in between waiting. So for like so. like when you say 
a one hour train ride in in yeah. in Canada that means you're going over a large distance right not it's not because yeah. in Sri Lanka when you say you're in traffic that means because it's bad traffic and it's a, like a so usually it's te- technically like a 40 minute train ride but like morning morning uh, commute mm-hmm. every day there's like a 20 minute delay so that's a, that's the mm-hmm. one, oh, one okay. hour train ride. right uh, and it's not like an express train so it stops in like every it's it's technically like without traffic it's like an hours drive mm-hmm. uh, right right right, right, right. I, i don't okay. know how many kilometers or whatever i, I you know i don't pay attention to right to, right to, <laughs> uh, but uh, yeah it's it's a pretty long so 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 you're okay. you're like you're really like tired by the time you get home and then right yeah i know. can imagine okay and, so and, for and, and we didn't yeah. And in film, we didn't have like nine to five hours, right? So you okay. go to work at nine, whatever, and like sometimes ah, you're okay. you home by like nine or like twelve or whatever. So um, you loved your job until this new, like you had you had to work under. Um, yeah, that that this. was that was a that was a major fuck up too, um, yeah. because what happened was, um, so how I got into my so, uh, so what happened was we we split teams at the at the time. Okay, um, and. um one of the other teams a, a guy in one of the other teams promised me a promotion saying okay we'll pro- i was a the manager then i will promote mm-hmm. you to director if you come over to my team kind of thing. okay i'm like okay right. can, can can you do it like i i, I want it written mm-hmm. uh, if it's happening he's like no 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 you know like i worked with him he's a pretty nice guy yeah okay. uh, okay. so he's like i'm calling out everyone's names so <laughs> <laughs> i'm not going to work with those people. yeah just let me know uh, if i need to beep anything because i no, uh, no 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 you're good, you're good. don't worry yeah. about it. um yeah. So yeah, like Ian's a nice guy. He's a super nice guy. He was a super nice guy. So right. he's like, come over. Um, I'll 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 promote you. I'll mm. you know like if you come out of my team. So I'm like okay. And and my boss at the time, Polly, who was like who was really good to us. She's like mm. okay, come on. This is a good opportunity for you. If you stay in my team, I can't give you this promotion because like all my you know all my top player is filled already. Um, right. But you go over to his team. He'll give you a promotion, whatever, which is like a 20 grand or like 15 grand pay bump too, which is pretty good. Right. Um, and I'm like okay. Uh and so so he promises me this thing and I I take my like three week vacation go back to Sri Lanka I come back and he's like I can't mm-hmm. offer you like this promotion but oh, you have wow. no choice. Right. You have no choice. You're in my team now. Oh my god. Um, but you you know I'll give you like a what five grand pay bump and mm-hmm. uh you're in my team like you have no choice you and and I was I was I was more like a my position was a marketing manager i was doing more creative direction and stuff but okay. now i'm working on fucking excel excel sheets and i'm like oh god it right. doesn't make sense and the yeah. guy who's good at doing excel sheets is a marketing manager or a marketing oh, director uh. like this is like <laughs> fucked up this doesn't make sense right so yeah. like idiots are all everywhere in the way. I, i i don't yeah. i don't think they plan i don't think they planned it well that's what right. I mean. like when they filled when they filled their like organization chart or whatever they didn't plan it well. so okay. that didn't go well so i'm like okay now i i don't you know i dislike my job mm. and the culture that was cuz like we were with like a lot of fr- like we had like a good group of friends um jason bitten who's my partner now in sneaker tab right uh, and another okay. guy called darcy who's like a very good friend of mine we still stay in touch um so we had like this four five people click which I didn't have anymore I worked on another flow and I worked on things that I didn't like so right. if I come over to Michael's team what would happen is I would get to hang out with those people but I won't love my job so I'm like yeah, yeah, yeah. what's better like having not having both or having one of them so I'm like okay yeah. give me a transfer back so I'll come to Michael's team that's the only way I'm going to come over um and then like my boss at the time like the vp at the time polly who was my boss mm-hmm. before who i reported to she was like okay you come back to michael's team and i'll get you on my team within like 6 months or whatever right so it, okay. it took a little bit longer than 6 months so before <laughs> before everyone got fired <laughs> before anything happened everyone got fired and, right. and michael ross stayed on actually uh, right, he was right, the right. only he was one of the only people who didn't get laid off uh, he right. stayed on for about 4 or 5 months after him. I think I think on the last day I was like so we had this um get together kind of thing at the pub like downstairs and um, yeah so be- before I left I said it was a pleasure working with anyone uh, like with mm-hmm. everyone but not you Michael and oh, that's, wow. that's where oh, I left wow. things. I oh my god the dude since then. That's amazing like you just went up to this that's crazy wow. <laughs> okay. Uh yeah so that's 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 uh so I think because I didn't really 
like the job. I mm. didn't face your traditional challenge or like the mental uh, mm -hmm. barrier or whatever you call it uh, yeah. of like losing your job and like being depressed or frustrated. I'm like, right. okay, like now I'm free was the feeling I got when I right. when right. I lost my I, job. But I, I, I can imagine how like, bad of a manager he was for you to lose your job and oh yeah, for you was, to immediately dude, believe me. He was, he was a micromanager and I sat oh right next to him so he can like always peep into my computer and see oh what wow. I'm doing. So, like <laughs> literally once every two hours he would do this jesus that's crazy yeah. and and he would have and he would have these meetings in the morning um mm. so they they called them one on ones mm. but he used to ask you about other people's shit he's like okay what is oh wow like, so he was like a gossip team, monger like, what, yeah so what is this what's this gossip what's what's the gossip like that's right. going on in the office right now and it, he used to go and report every like grab everything together and he would go report to like his manager and right. be like okay this is what's happening in the office like he's he's like this big shot who knows knows everything mm. so he was like the he was like scum of the earth worst of the worst people oh, that wow. I've ever met like as a manager and as a human being right i so mean if if, and if you're listening to this michael fuck you <laughs> <laughs> I'm definitely going to send in the link after this thing comes yeah. out because you mentioned yeah, yeah. it. He, he Hopefully he sees it. it. Uh, okay. Yeah, so, so, in, so in that whole traditional manner, um, mm -hmm. I, 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 I wasn't. But I knew, I knew the challenge of not having a job. So I, I, I actually went for a few interviews as well. Then I'm like, okay. why do I have to prove to these people that I'm good enough to work for them? Because obviously I, I am foreign and I sound foreign, right? So yeah. White people have a competitive advantage right. above me. Definitely. Yeah, there definitely, is yeah. like any company can say, you know, they're like all like most companies, I'd say 90% of the companies can say, you know, um, equality above everything else, but diversity at the end of the day, and this and that. diversity at the end of the day, uh, it depends on the person who's interviewing you, right? Like right. If, if that person's a racist, it, it doesn't even have to be a racist. It's like, it could be simple things as they could say, oh, like you're not a good fit for my team because they won't, they won't say you have a different accent and that's why you're not, you know, you're, yeah. you're not a culturally a good fit. Yeah. Uh, but you, but you could be culturally a good fit because like, okay, you consume the same things that other people consume, right? So right. You, you are culturally a good fit technically, but you judge based on appearance and based on what you hear yeah. and that and, and that person doesn't they don't get that opportunity so that's that's a huge thing I've seen in this country but a lot of tech companies they don't have that problem but then they, mm. they have like they, they have their other problems right right yeah uh, I mean that's really it's, so, I, mean, so I, I needed to figure out what I needed to do with my life so mm -hmm. that's when I thought I'm not gonna you know I'm not gonna prove to other people that I'm good enough for them mm -hmm. uh, rather than that I would just you know yeah. Go and start my own thing. Uh, I'll be my own boss. If it takes off, it's good. But if it doesn't take off, I, I can always go back to a nine to five. Right, 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 right. So like, this is something that I'm struggling as well. Like, I mean, I luckily I do love my job and I do love doing freelance. So I definitely Dude, let me both. just check. Give me one second. Let me just check on the camera and see if it's yeah, 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 of course. Yeah. So like, okay, how scare for me, this is something that I'm like struggling and I'm mm. pretty sure a lot of people are struggling. How, how scary was it to lose that regular paycheck uh, at that moment? Cause that's probably the first thing that comes into your mind, right? Yeah. Um, and, and I had just bought a house. Oh, wow. Uh, so I had a right. mortgage to pay, right? right? So I wasn't even renting. So I'm like, right. okay, I'm paying more money now and then I have more responsibility. Right. Um, I think that's the reason that made me like hustle really hard too. Mm. Um, mm -hmm. Because I wasn't sure uh, where my next paycheck was coming, right? right? So I needed to make money fast. Right. So if I need to make money fast, I need to work twice as fast to do that. Right, right. Because my my mortgage is due in a month so luckily like for me my wife had a job obviously like we right. both work okay. so it wasn't as bad as it sounds right but still there's there are certain responsibilities mm -hmm. as a man in the house that you have to do certain things even though we are not like even, even though like you know like my wife's not a traditional thinker like that you need to bring more bread home right, 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 like right, me right. kind of thing okay um but that's what like most traditional mm -hmm. families mm -hmm. kind of you know yeah think about yeah. like the man has to earn more like that we, we don't believe in that mm -hmm. it's just 
like you know it's whatever our resources are like yeah. our resources yeah. kind of thing and uh, i think it comes to more like I you just want to do your part you know like uh, as exactly like, exactly like, so it's 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 a me thing not a we thing um when it comes to that uh yeah so but i i i wanted to you know i want i i i, I thought of what stability would mean cuz i i always thought a job would be the stable route Right. But technically it is not you can get fired any time oh wow yeah that's that's ex- <laughs> but yeah. but if if you're doing your own thing you're in control mm. you're in mm. control of your stability it's right. how hard you work it's how 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 hungry you are uh, to reach your goal right so i think that's where stability lies okay. in stability is control right right wow If I'm not, yeah, no, you're like you're definitely somebody. changing my perspective on this security thing. I've that's I've never thought about it like that. Pretty interesting. Because imagine, like, yeah. coronavirus comes. Oh my god! Yeah, and you're fucked out of a job. Mm. Many this has happened to many people. Like one of my um one of my one of the guys I went to school with mm. um messaged me the other day, uh, like asking to borrow money from me because right. he was working for this company and he got fired and he. he's a divorcee with a kid oh wow and he doesn't have a job and he doesn't have you know he doesn't have money to eat right no because most people live paycheck to paycheck right yeah 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 wow that's that's crazy um, you think about it like that yeah actually having a job is probably the most insecure thing that can, can happen to you technical because you you never know when you're going to get that nah, call Right. Even if no, you're you know, you job. know what? Like, if you plan, if you plan your life properly, and you don't spend on stupid shit, hmm. and you know, you have you have a backup of a little bit of money to go back to during hard hmm. times, which is good. Right. That is that is always good. That's a secure route. Mm-hmm. But what security anyway at the end? Right. Of it, right. You could die. <laughs> you could die tomorrow. That's so true. That's so true. Okay. So now, like, let's talk about dragons, then, because I really want to. We okay. all we all have seen what's um. what's on the outside and then uh, you've also yeah. explained previously that it was a huge vetting process where you know you pitch your idea and then the producers go through it okay then yeah. when you once you've done all that you walking in um to that room uh what was it like because you cuz cuz you are trying to convince these people to give you some money um and to you know cuz to grow your business yeah. like what was um, how where did the confidence come from is um Cause I'm sure it didn't come. Dude, I love, ca- I I love cameras. Right, nice. Like I'm that guy, like right. in front of the camera, like jabbering away. Nice. No, okay. So I I I never had a problem with um, stage fright or nervousness. Okay. Uh, lucky for me, I I never had that. Right. Um. So with dragons, then yes, there were butterflies in my belly because this is the first time. Like I'm, you know, I'm I'm pitching my. It's actually it's not the first time I'm pitching my product but it's mm. it's the first time I'm pitching my product to uh prospective people uh who could help my business also if I don't do it right I could look like a fucking joke on national TV right right wow right? Yeah. so so that yeah. that's the that's the only thing that I'm concerned about mm. like I'm, I don't want to look like a joke in front of everyone right because you've seen those shows right yeah. you've seen those yeah. blueberries yeah. yes <laughs> and 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 they edited it out to make you look so bad yes. even if you weren't right right yeah so those are the two things i was con- concerned about and i watched um i i think i went in season 11 mm-hmm. uh, sorry season 12 right right i right. watched all of the episodes from the day i got my um got my shoot in it i watched all of the dragons episodes from season 1 right um canadian dragons den and british dragons den right. i watched everything right and i i And I'm I'm not this guy who like you know writes stuff down or like you know plans my day or whatever mm-hmm. like you know some people with their notebooks yeah. they like jot down things yeah, yeah. I'm not that guy. Right. Um I I mentally answered every question that they could probably ask. Me. Okay. Wow. Every single okay. question, right? And I mentally prepared for it. Mm-hmm. Um knowing that I didn't look like I didn't want to look like a joke in front of everybody. Right. Um I think that's that's where preparation comes. Okay. Um, okay, so and most people go into these pictures without you know preparing preparing it all and i knew my business inside out and they could ask me anything about anything right um the only thing i didn't know was my customer acquisition cost mm. um because 
I didn't do digital back marketing back in the day. Okay. Um, I did influencer marketing back in the day, and I didn't pay the influencers. So mm-hmm. the answer for that, and and I got asked that at the show, but you guys didn't see the you you, you guys didn't see it because it was cut down to seven minutes, but the actual right. pitch was an hour and a half. Okay. Uh, okay. Wow. Wow. You did. Wow. Well, you were standing so in front of them for what uh, hour and a half. Oh yeah, man. I, we were going back and forth for hour and a half. Like they, they oh. don't give you their money, or they don't. You know, they don't That's even. True. Okay. Um, they they don't even. Even for T on TV, because it's technically they don't give you their money after vetting you after you get get out of there. Okay. They vet you for a year after you get out of there. Oh and wow. Then, then they decide whether they want to give you. On. And they on those shows only the deal the deals that are made on TV mm. actually like four or five percent deals actually go through post. Oh okay. Interesting. Yeah. Because you you're it's just a handshake deal, right? You're just mm. you're just shaking hands. You're not signing a document. Okay. Okay. So they vet you for so their financial people actually vet you for a year before yeah. they even like. Cause, yeah, because it actually you. makes sense when you say because they are giving like these are like this is serious money. And I that... knew that. I and I knew that. Right. I knew that going into the show. Okay. So I didn't go into the show blind because I bought, I contacted a few people like blindly contacted them uh-huh. um, before the show who went on like previous seasons. I'm like, uh, dude, okay. can you, like I'm going on the show. Like this is so. So this is what you did. You reach out to me randomly, right? This right, is like yeah. your resourcefulness. Right. Like you just reach out uh, randomly, reach out to people and ask what you want to ask them. They mm. might reply. They might not. But if they reply, it's good, right? Right. Yeah. yeah. Um, Wow, interesting. So, and one of my friend's sisters had gone on the show too, so I had access to her. So I'm like, okay, what, um, mm-hmm. you know, what, what, what happened to them, and like, what really happens on the show? So I was prepared. Right. Um, that's why I didn't negotiate. So my deal, the deal that they actually um, uh, put out on the show is wrong. Mm. So they gave me hundred thousand for forty thousand uh, for forty okay. percent, but they said fi- the editing guy somehow made a mistake and he made it look like it's fifty thousand forty percent because they. They first they asked me so first they proposed fifty thousand for forty percent. Oh, okay. But I went back to them and said hundred thousand for forty percent. Oh wow! Oh my god! But they they edited so they edited that part out. Okay. Um. Right. So so uh, amazing. So you negotiated. Yeah. You doubled the the cost of your equity during that. Yes. Oh wow! Interesting. That's because I I don't remember what I originally asked. For. I think I asked for. Uh, fifty thousand for twenty percent, I think. Is okay. For. So when they when they doubled uh, the equity, the, you... the, the share value, the, the equity, I doubled the ask. Right, right. So technically, it would be the same deal at the end right. of the day. Interesting. Wow. You you don't have yeah. access to that one and a half hour clip, right? Even for your personal. No, uh, no right, they don't right. give it. Right. I can't even I can't even post it on my YouTube. They 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 ban you. Like right. CBC is so archaic and they're like you know so backward thinking. Okay. Because like at first. At first, I uploaded it on my YouTube, I'm... gave them all the credits, didn't mon- monetize it, whatever. Yeah. Um, and it had like 1.2 million views. And suddenly, we get a copyright strike saying you can't have this. Right. Like, if they were smart, they would like they would take all that revenue to them. Yeah, right? I mean that's cause, cause weird because I was trying to look for this clip because I've seen it multiple times, but like yeah. over the it last only, week, it, 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 it's nowhere it, to be seen. Um, yeah, it's on it's on fa- it's on. Yeah, it's on Facebook yeah. on uh, one of the Sri Lankan pages, Elifas, I think, and yeah, uh, it's right. on the Dragon's Day website, okay. CBC website. That's where okay. I, it's the only place where right, it right. exists. Interesting. Okay, after you got on Dragon's Day, how? When did it reach home? When did it reach Sri Lanka? What was? Who called you first and said, "Wow, dude, you're on Dragon's Day"? Do you remember that moment? Like the first Sri Lankan to like mm. reach out to you. So I think I think this aired in November. Mm-hmm. I, I, November, I didn't. I think till towards maybe the end of December or yeah, I didn't even reach Sri Lanka till end of no. It okay. It could have aired in late October or early November, so it didn't even reach Sri Lanka or whatever till. Uh, so I posted it mm-hmm. and like no one really cared what right. it was. No one knew what it was. Right. And I think my my good friend uh, musician Lahiru Pereira, I think yeah. he shared it on his timeline. Right. And I think that's how. Elifas guy picked it up, right. and then he, when he posted it, it was like, boom! I'm like ten thousand views, twenty thousand, thirty thousand, oh, forty thousand. Wow. I just kept refreshing. Right. It went so fast. It, 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 I think it like went viral again, like about a month back. Right. It gained like hundred thousand new views because like some guy, like random guy, shared it, and mm. this whole new audience like kind of clung clung onto it. Right. Right. That's pretty crazy. Because I remember, see, I think yeah. I would have seen it probably like last year. Uh, 
okay. when it came. Or maybe a year before that, and we were all excited, you know, okay, wow, this guy is uh, pretty. Um, yeah. I had no idea that you studied. I thought you, at the time, I thought you were born and bred in Canada and stuff like that. And then I had no idea that you were, you know, in Sri Lanka and then you were just a guy like us that, you know, went to St. Yeah. Thomas's, went abroad and did. Uh, a degree came back and then went back to Canada. So that that was yeah. like inspiring and enlightening. That as the possibilities of because uh, a lot I know a lot of people like me are struggling with that. You know, with the same circumstances, yeah. saying you know what I was born to a Sri Lankan family. I was born in Sri Lanka. I don't have um, yeah even like you know people who are as you know like uh, pre- fortunate as me and you and I are. Where parents are, I'm still living in my parents' my parents' mm-hmm. house. Uh, so Good yeah. Sure, and, no, uh, you you live with your parents and you save up, right? That's the, the yeah, that's that's the best thing to do. Right. I yeah. mean, I don't know how much you get paid and how much your company pays you, but <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I could live on my own if I wanted to. But like, there's something about, yeah. like you said, you know, I want to save up as much money as much as I can um, uh, here as well. But, yeah, it's it's like the Sri, the Sri Lankan system is good and bad in a way because mm-hmm. you don't. Um, you're not independent once you go out to the world. Right. Uh, yeah. But but also like you know there's this whole family culture thing that we are closely attached to. Yeah. If I was in Sri Lanka I would have still lived at home. Yeah. Cuz here uh, here the parents get offended if you try to move out, right? Like it's not like yeah. anywhere else like uh, I think I think it will change with like when we have kids and uh, well, mm. I have two kids, but when you guys will have kids right. yeah. and like when they grow up like we'll okay. cuz we are exposed to like more things than this. That's right? true. That's true. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But there there'll still be those traditional Homes. um group okay. of people who would yeah. that won't change. Yeah. Yeah, interesting. I mean, yeah, because whenever I hear somebody moving out and living on the NA20, I suddenly have this huge respect because, um, you know, I know I start valuing how much that morning cup of tea is when it's coming from. Oh, yeah. <laughs> when you don't have to make it. But yeah, so that's that's one thing that easily, you know, makes me start admiring people and uh, they move out and, you know, it keeps thinking, okay, you know, I need to know what it feels like to do that because you have to have a taste of yeah. it at least once. So hopefully this is this year is my target to try and do it <laughs> <laughs> or we'll see okay so then let's you know touch about okay your sneakers and your love for sneakers i am a bit of a sneaker head i don't know if you could see my sh- like i have a bit of some like kicks over there and i have some I like here I and there that. as well um yeah and, and i love as a photographer i love sneakers because he, he makes such a good like model or a product to shoot um, oh yeah, and uh, yeah. I've I've done it as of late because of the whole quarantine thing. I've you know going around my house, keeping my shoes, and taking pictures of here and there just to make content. Yeah, I saw the Jordans on your profile. Uh, oh the, yeah, that the was gray Jordans. Yeah, so that was that was my recent thing because I want to tell people that you don't need a fancy camera. You just need your mobile phone. Was it uh, so? Was it shot on like an iPhone? It was shot on a Samsung uh, S10. Uh, and I've been trying to teach people how to use Photoshop to just take that and. Um, there are certain disadvantages like shooting this. on a mobile phone and how to just remove right. that. So that's what I'm trying to do these yeah. days, especially um, uh, in during quarantine. Over the past uh, six weeks, I've been working from home as well. Um, how much content do you put out a week? Uh, as of as as of the past six weeks, two videos a week. Uh, it's only been the past six weeks that I've you know been consistent and I've been reaching out to people and I've been wanting. To uh, do this, do this, because um, I don't know for some reason I've been very hesitant and lazy about making content and scared at the same time mm. whether people are going to you know like watch it. Um, and, Fuck, uh, people. <laughs> Fuck people! Fuck <laughs> people! Seriously, like people, yeah. like you don't know people. The, the shit people say to me, like today one guy is like. Okay, this guy started two YouTube channels to make more money. I'm like, bro, you don't even know how much money I make. I don't right. even make 70 bucks a month off YouTube. It's like fucking ridiculous. Right. Like, you know, right. like I'm not milking money here. Like I'm giving yeah. away fucking free advice, which I could have <laughs> sold to some company, but yeah. I'm giving it free to you on the internet. And this is, this is how you feel. Because right. like, I don't usually reply to haters, but like right. this guy, like I had to make sure like I replied. Right. Um, <laughs> Yeah, uh, so pe- yeah, people are people are gonna like, bro. Haters are gonna hate anyway. Mm-hmm. You can't, yeah, you can't think of that. Yeah, and then I've, I've obviously like started started. I mean, I've I've saw you that you started a YouTube channel. You started, you know, the content that you're making, and obviously that uh, drove me to 
make stuff like this and i started getting engagement especially long form videos where i you know speak to people and give them like uh, oh, yeah. information and um, the, and, and imagine the connections you're making right like now you know me next time yeah, you need exactly. a favor you can come to me like yeah. i know you like we're talking for like 2 hours and i know you mm-hmm. like personally right yeah. so those connections are really 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 important mm-hmm. so content is a great way to like make connections what was yeah. you, were you making content before sneak like the whole dragon days like, cuz at that time nobody no, just, was really making just, youtube just for the just just instagram for the company that's it right so how how important is it for you as a business like to make video like content oh bro it's so important like mm-hmm. content is so so our content strategy is a little little different you might have seen so we've done some unboxings and stuff mm-hmm. with like some celebrities and all that yeah. um when we have access to we right. do that mm-hmm. uh when we have access to them but it's really hard to book like people like director x right like yeah. he's a fan of the store mm-hmm. and he's a fan of like the like milk brand so right. and he he he's a consumer he usually comes to the store to like grab stuff oh, wow. right so nice. that's how Uh um, nice. that's how I know him. Mm. Um then we did a bunch of stuff that's yet to come out mm. uh with uh Four Corners who's like the Raptors like the official DJ. Right. Um then we did some stuff with um DJ Romeo who is like uh Michael Jordan's DJ. Right. Um so he plays like Michael Jordan and NBA parties. Ah, uh, Nadia Stone who's like a R&B uh singer from wow. Toronto. Uh, so so, so we've done yeah. all that. um but r- right now since um since the whole covid thing happened i mm-hmm. actually doubled my uh, ad-, ad budget okay um, so we are we're going like full throttle and it it's seeing great results so we're doing a- tons of paid ads mm-hmm. and um we should be doing more like i should be doing like I- i'm i'm literally like with my phone i'm handling like content for right. sneak it up because we're not i'm not paying an agency to do that mm-hmm. i'm paying an agency to run ads for us mm. and to do the whole strategy thing right. like figure out what are the audiences all that but that creative like everything comes from like my phone right, right. um i wish i had like more time to do like tiktok and stuff mm. cuz tiktok is a fucking great app like, <laughs> people in sri lanka abuses it right. and it gets a bad name yeah. it's the app with most organic reach right now tiktok right. and linkedin yeah so my... i wish i had more yeah. time to do content for tiktok and linkedin which i'm 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 definitely I have two kids and I'm when I'm at home I can't work like the way I work when I'm outside of, of course, home because right. I get like I have two young kids and a very needy dog. Right, okay. <laughs> so they take they, I can't sit straight and concentrate on one thing for like a long time. Yeah. So I have to like take breaks, right? Like right. so my my work time is like night time after all of them goes to sleep it's like from mm. 11 p.m. to like 4 a.m. I'm recording podcasts like right. I'm doing all that. So I'm like because I'm doing like the personal branding thing as well so it's it's taking some time off like me try to do stuff on LinkedIn mm-hmm. and TikTok but I'll get there. I'll get right, there. Right, right, right. Interesting. Oh sorry, at the my image first. Well. Yeah. Yeah, when it comes to advertising yeah. so up to now I uh, for my freelance work that I do I mean I've spent about $300 on advertising over the past 2 years right uh it's only okay. uh last like last week uh, I I did this ad campaign for $2 a day and it's running at the moment right now the, it's only that yeah. it's been $10 yeah. from those $300 that I spent it's yeah. this $10 have made the most amount of engagement and I've got like a thousand followers over the past um week and then and i realized okay you know what just because i had the option of advertising before when i advertised my foundation wasn't set with my page and you know the kind of work that i was doing um and it's only yeah. that i've built that up now that people are you know finding it interesting and coming and actually engaging with me so what's your strategy yeah. when it, it comes to cuz it's so freely available to everybody anybody can go and um um uh, advertise what they're doing right How yeah. have you find success in advertising for people for personal brands? For Jaiwes right now, even though I do photography and all that, it's it's a bit of a personal brand to me as well. Um mm-hmm. what are your thoughts it on advertising? Brand, yeah. yeah. For me, it has to be the right content mm-hmm. uh push to the right people, so, to your right audience. Right. If you push great creative content to someone who's not ready to consume your content, mm-hmm. no one's going to look at right, your ad. Right. So, and if you push bad content mm-hmm. to your target audience, no one's going to look at you. Uh, so it has to be a nice flow of the two like mixed together. That's 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 what I believe mm-hmm. in. Uh that's for paid ads, but you have to supplement it with organic. 
Mm. You definitely have to supplement it with organic. You should post at least twice a day. Right, right. I would like to say 12 times a day on across all media platforms. Right. Like everything. Mm. Uh, but I won't say that because I don't do it. I practice what I yeah. preach, so I can't tell you that. I do twice a mm. day um, on on my company socials. I try to do tw- twice a day on company mm. social. Um, at least Facebook, uh, my Facebook page, I don't pay any attention to it, um, but I should. Uh, now that I've started the podcast, yeah. I have the content to like push towards the yeah. page. Uh, on my personal, I post like mm. on my po- personal is where i get the most uh, organic traffic for like my my brand right. on my personal instagram on my facebook i get uh, the most engagement mm. personal instagram i make sure i post stuff but i also it, there's no proper content plan for right. it so it's just like my personal page but i would push stuff you know i would i would take like some of the youtube video stuff that i've done and i've linked it I've, i'll link it with like a picture or whatever and do that so there's no like proper con- co- content strategy for my personal brand on my instagram and on my facebook but yes for youtube hmm. yes everything is planned okay mostly interesting so right. so i'm trying so right, how, like, right now i'm trying to put out one po- podcast episode every day oh wow it's are you doing audio only or video and audio as well so so, so there's two like when i speak to the mic it's audio only mm-hmm. like i'm talking about my journey and like giving my expertise and all that uh, so that mm-hmm. is the kamaj show but the extension of kamaj show is called the happy hour where i bring in like um people expertise from different areas and they have mm. they basically have a conversation with me just like this and we go back and forth okay. on on certain things right okay interesting yeah i, I don't think I, i i apologize i don't think i found the podcast as yet but that's something i definitely need to go check out because yeah. i'm a huge fan of um, podcast cuz audio cuz bro like uh, audio is you know, the future like it's the like yeah. with amazon echo and like with google home and with the um, siri and all that like content like audio content is the future like sri lanka will get there right. so so that's why i wanted to right. like get in really early cuz sri lanka has like yeah, how, yeah. Many, how many podcasts does sri lanka have uh illumination is the one i know which is run by yeah. like, two of my friends um mm-hmm. i do a podcast called podhub as well that i think uh, podhub is, is it a sri lankan thing pod- It's a Sri Lanka thing as well. Uh, is it a podcast or was it, is it a podcast network? No, it's just a podcast. Oh, like, okay, uh, they have they're just doing it on their own site. I think I'll send you the link. I think they do a little bit as well. Okay. But as far as um, I think a lot of podcasts in Sri Lanka they don't consider the quality of audio and video. Mm-hmm. Content is important, but the threshold for getting good audio and video quality is so easy. Yeah. Yeah. like me asking you to just record on the side of your fo- with a phone yeah. uh it's so easy and that's because no one like, judges you by your like video right exactly like, it's you don't a need it. like yeah. i have a key light but usually like, you don't need a key light right. and like you know yeah like i like to <laughs> yeah i mean i have a I like massive to... soft box here as well <laughs> nice. <laughs> but, uh, yeah cuz because cuz that's my trade good. like i saw the the link you sent me like your stuff looks good man mm-hmm. like it's like because you come from a design background right so you can create yeah, like, exactly. you can take yeah. like a like a normal looking uh, like some normal looking footage and you can spice it up like Make you know it, how to do it exactly but and like, it attracts a little bit of people here and there so that's i also want to you know shoot to them as well yeah yeah um, man like uh, right. honestly like for podcasts like you don't like you don't need uh, like i just started this week and exactly. like like it's mm. not it's not huge numbers but like 1000 plays mm. for like the first week of your podcast i think is good mm. wow that's pretty amazing <laughs> I, I don't that's, know. That's, I, I don't know like the numbers yeah. of like the other guys, but I, I, I don't know. Yeah. I, I just looked at yeah. it. I'm like, because I didn't look at like stats mm. for. I don't usually look at stats, right. but like uh, right. this morning when I loaded the dashboard, I'm like, oh, thousand plays, not bad. Right, right. Yeah, that's that's pretty. That's pretty good. I hope yeah. I can get thousand yeah. soon. <laughs> what, what what's what's yours right. like now? Right now, the most I think I'll think these are the ones that I get the most number of views in the first day. I only hit like 150. But uh, uh, is yours on like Apple and? Uh... No, see that's the problem. I don't have an audio version of this, even though I'm calling this a podcast, which is what. <laughs> no, so my uh, my my Plus, video version gets the most hits, right? Like my the one I did right. last got like it's almost 10,000 now. Uh, right. on my second channel which is which is yeah. the channel I started for the podcast because I want to drive mm. like that that video audience I want to drive them to audio you can't mm. directly drive them to audio without putting out a video first yeah because yeah, yeah. people should know yeah. podcast is not a thing like when I listen like I'm a huge like Gary V consumer 
Um, yeah. Oh my God. Yeah, Gary. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> So funny story. Gary Vee was yeah. interested in investing in Sneaker Tab at some point. Are you serious? Uh, oh wow! But I think I, 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 I fucking blew the deal because I had to get something to them on time and I couldn't get it to them on time because like a lot was mm. going on back then, um, like with the yeah. company. So uh, like, and it didn't work out. Whatever. Um, right. Right. But like, I have. I, I have emails and screenshots of stuff that he sent. Me. Oh wow, yeah, that's I had pretty a, crazy. I, I had a call with like their like Vayner Media CEO as well, so we like we were on the mm. phone for like an hour. We were discussing like. Yeah. I mean, come to think of it, come to think of it, I'm not that surprised now because he's a sneakerhead as well, right? Yeah, like, he's he's into sneakers. Yeah, he stuff. did. A, he he did a, he has a deal with K Swiss, right? I have those. I have yeah. those sneakers. Wait, I'll K-Swiss. show you. I'll show you. Yeah, this has to be C. These ones, the Cloud and. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Exactly. K- this is the ones that he has his yeah, I got signature this on the sole, right? K Swiss. Uh, I used to know their uh, oh, nice. of marketing, so she sent me these. Nice. Yeah. yeah. Have you worn them? Ah, uh, yeah, man. I wear. I, I wear everything. I wear all my. Signature. Right. Right. Nice. I don't. There's nice. no dead stock. Nothing on ice. I wear everything. Yeah. <laughs> nice. Yeah. Let's talk about that. So you know, everybody has their list, right? Yeah. So for me, the one that we're completely irrational when it comes to spending. For me, mm. number one is food. Number two is camera gear, obviously, because I'm obsessed. And right. sneakers are the like the third in line, right? Because because I I grew up obviously when I was in going in school. For me, spending three thousand to four thousand Sri Lankan rupees was a big thing, right? Right. And then I went into college and I started learning all brands. And now, like you know, you need a good pair of shoes. It's about you know twenty five to thirty thousand Sri Lankan rupees a decent pair of shoes, right? Yeah. So that's another thing that I spend in it. What's your list of irrational things that you love to spend on? That you don't look at price tags. Okay, um, so uh, my my spending has changed in the last two years. I will I will tell you that as mm-hmm. I mature, my spending um, changes. Right. So right. the first first I, I'd say. So I started sneaker tab because I felt also I felt guilty because I spent so much money mm-hmm. on sneakers when I was working. Right. So I'm like, okay, right. I, I'm sitting with like. So I've I've actually cut down on like I'll, I'll show you around like the sneaker room. Uh, yeah, it's yeah. a little bit of a mess, but I'm assuming you have over a hundred pairs of sneakers. Uh, so I used to have about uh, over three hundred, but I cut down. This is what oh, I'm left wow. with now. Yeah. Wait, yeah. So I, I, yeah, I have like Wait. stuff sitting outside which I want to donate. Dude, I love your ah, setup right now. What me. I'm uh, looking at right now. Yeah, you're just seeing yeah. me, right? I'm like turning the camera like an idiot. I'll, I'll, I'll check it <laughs> out like during the audience the, when you send it to me, though. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, uh, I love your so, setup right now. The shoes—that's a dream, dream setup for me as well. Having yeah, the, man, I, like I put this together. Like I that. actually put this together like last week. Uh, so I had a, I had a room. Oh, wow. This whole room was full of boxes and stuff. Um, okay. And and I, I didn't know some of the sneakers I had because they were buried under, mm. and like this whole room was a mess. I, I told you I'm a messy person before, right? So right. I'm like okay, organized mess. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I, I'm like, okay, I need to uh, make sure that I like, because. Working from home right now. Mm-hmm. Uh, if I work out at the sofa, I'm like pulled in like hundred directions, and I wanted like right. a little. I wanted to make a little space to like work on my stuff and like you know and mm-hmm. do my stuff. Um, and I also bought a MacBook Pro, so I didn't want like my children or my dog <laughs> near that. So yeah. I'm like, I need a fucking room right. for my MacBook Pro. I'm not letting anyone right. touch it, right? <laughs> because I was like a PC guy all along, like. All along, yeah. because I do like I do Photoshop, I do my own editing, like all, all my own mm. Premiere stuff and all that. And like on a PC, right. it used to like I had like a good like i7 whatever with good specs, but it still lags on the PC for some fucking yeah. reason. Yeah. Now, like yeah. when I edit on Premiere, it's like butter, like it just cuts, man. Yeah, it's nice. Um, <laughs> so I, I I put together li- this little space, which interesting. So doubles as you. So I'm assuming. Yeah. So I'm assuming your irrational spending on top is sneakers. Is it safe to say that, uh, or do you have something else that has so, overtaken over the past couple of months? Uh, it's sneakers and like tech stuff, like okay, like phones the MacBook Pro, MacBook <laughs> phones, <laughs> iPads, yeah. Sonos, okay. all that. Um, right. It, it's not like it's well, it's, it's not irrational because I I don't upgrade. Like I had a some Samsung S9 Plus for two years. So when that contract right. ended is when I like this this like two weeks ago I got like yeah, the S- I, S20. I saw in one of your videos you doing the signature 
screenshot i think it was the interview with randeer where you were like did that on your phone as like ah, he's using a samsung <laughs> yeah cuz i i really wanted to get get like the new iphone um right but i couldn't say yeah. no to the um galaxy s20 ultra like the four cameras i'm like hello yeah on. and it's right. and i'm like okay samsung smart switch from my s9 plus to whatever this mm. is easy right like but like i miss airdrop mm. like when i shoot this like i miss airdrop right yeah but I mean, all I can my like cuz like i like apple but like i like apple as a pc but i don't think i like apple as like a, like an iphone as a phone like a because, phone yeah interesting interesting yeah it's, it's very it's very difficult to find someone who's like objective with this kind of thing cuz apple they as a company they make like brand loyal customers right so it's very it's, difficult as a yeah like once you get into their ecosystem it's uh, it's hard to get out actually right right yeah uh, yeah i'd, I'd say so like tech stuff and sneakers um but mm-hmm. i don't spend so sneakers it's funny right because i get everything at a wholesale price mm-hmm. i don't have to okay. pay retail because uh, usually when i buy for the company i would yeah, in, sneak in a pair yeah, for myself the, and i and i <laughs> also and i also get like a lot of samples as well from from sales mm-hmm. reps so right i'm a 9 and a half to 10 samples are size mm. 9 so the ones i really like i'll take off the 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 mm. what do you call it the this piece um for the life of me i can't remember what it, what do you call it the inserts no the insole you mean the insole yes that's what yeah, yeah, yeah. Shame, <laughs> a shame to run a sneaker company i don't know an insole <laughs> yeah, i take out the insole and it, then it fits just right the sample size right 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 um, interesting so but what's yeah. the markup like when you, for sneakers like with wholesale and retail what's the 50, is it 50%. like a massive oh okay okay uh but right, if it's like off uh if it's but if it's like you know if it's not in season and like older stuff you get like better mm. pricing on those Right, right, right. Hmm. Like do okay, uh, I I have the reason I'm into sneakers is cuz I have two diehard sneaker head fans. Okay, that's how most of us get into sneakers and stuff. Like what are sneakers like, you know, like do they go up in price over over time? Cuz I've seen a few. Depends like, on what they. Does it happen are. often? Depends on what they are. Uh like if you get your <laughs> hands on a pair of like Travis Scott Jordan ones mm-hmm. like you're good. Oh okay. Um there's your like Chicago Jordans or right, you know, right, your flu right, right. games or whatever they are. Um mm-hmm. those go up in price. But I'm not like I don't I don't do the whole like hype sneaker thing. Like okay. I don't have right. to have the Travis Scott or I don't have to have like the Supreme collabs um mm. or I don't have to have like the Yeezy Red Octobers or whatever. I'm like I'm not that guy. Right, I right, buy right. what I like. Interesting. Oh dude, I mean there's, there's so much that I wish I could have you on this call for like hours like the whole day. But I do want to end things yeah. by um uh saying cuz I I don't know if you actually have a tattoo but I've seen like a tiny glimpse of it on your arm. I Is that a tattoo? I have 1 2 3 4 5. Oh wow, okay. Okay, we can get into this conversation. I got like I got I got these are like my like the newest ones. These oh, two I got like this year. I'm uh, glad I'm glad. Panther and a and a wolf. Kind of interesting thing. i'm a, I'm a huge tattoo guy like I, i'm already booked in for like a half a sleeve oh uh, nice like a, quarter, like a three nice. quarter sleeve but um i can't okay brilliant we can get into that conversation then like okay tattoos <laughs> i love tattoos i have one tiny yeah. tattoo and it it hurt when i took it so i really want to get a sleeve but i'm just like afraid of the the pain where did you where did you first get your tattoo like what inspired you to get tattoos So I saw these rock stars on TV and I wanted to be like them. Um, <laughs> oh, right. So that's where I and I got my tattoo in uh in Bambalapitiya on Lorries Road this okay. old uncle um Nelson uncle I still remember him. Oh, okay. Uh, Nelson uncle he's like this old school tattoo guy. Okay. So he has yes. this makeshift like homemade machine. Oh wow. Uh, that she spark that he sparks with the other hand and he tattoos with one hand. Oh, he sparks wow. the electricity with one hand so the machine works and he tattoos with one hand. Oh wow. Um, he so back in the day it was good for what it is. Like now mm. like I look at it it's like warped and you know like it, it's like double edged or whatever like it's poking right, out right, or whatever. Right, 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 right. Um so I'm, I'm just... getting like some of those tattoos covered up too. Okay. Okay. <laughs> But yeah man like tattoos are it's it, it's a funny thing right like because mm. people judge you based on your tattoos. Mm. Uh, but then if you you know if you don't give a fuck about what other people think hey yeah do it hey 
Yeah, see, which I'm, I'm, I mean, I'm, I can't wait to see the sleeve. I definitely this year is this. I mean, so that I got this tattoo in 2012. I haven't yeah. touched anything as yet. So this year, hopefully, I'll be able to get yeah, it into it hurts, sleeve. Yeah, it But it, that's also the part of the experience, right? Exactly. Yeah. And like I got, yeah, I got these two like back to back. Oh, how long do you? How many hours? How many hours have you been underneath the gun? Do you remember? Like four, four, four hours. Is the maximum? Right, right. No, in the total all together. Oh. Uh, over so five tattoos i'd say the smaller ones took less time so mm-hmm. um like 20 hours i guess if i had to guess right right like totally okay interesting but yeah like my my like my dream is to have like two full sleeves uh right. but i don't yeah, know I'm, 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 I'm probably I'm gonna to do a quarter sleeve on this one and like a okay. full sleeve on this one at some point interesting yeah. awesome dude so i mean I am. I still can't believe that this, you know, this happened, and it's been an hour since I had a conversation about all these things. I'm so glad because right now I know that I'm a '90s kid. My generation in Sri Lanka are moving away from the '95 and you know trying to dabble in all these uh, ways because they're having a lot more opportunities here with online, uh, yeah. doing freelance stuff, and that's what you know like motivates me to like speak to people like you and try and uh, get uh, how you guys because you you are. The, I think you're you 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 are an 80s kid, right? I'm an 80s kid. A body yeah, 80s so, kid. yeah. So you guys are the ones that dabbled in this in our country, who took to pioneer it for us. That we you know we can we can start doing. I can't I can't take any credit for that because I don't live in Sri Lanka, so I don't know how the right. Sri Lankan ecosystem works. So yeah. there are other very very smart guys. I'm like, mm-hmm. I'm speaking to this guy called Sandun right now. Um, okay. Who who works with Costa? You know Costa, right? Like the rapper. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Yes, so they started yeah. a record label in Sri Lanka. So they, I know there's mm-hmm. there's many Sri Lankan kids who's mm-hmm. moved away from Sri Lanka who live in like Silicon right. Valley, all that. But right. it's amazing when we talk. Like I like I, I had no idea who he was two days before. Right. Uh, but okay. we connected, right? And like mm-hmm. it's it's funny how we always like connect back to like motherland. And we're like, I yeah, want to do this in right. Sri Lanka. Then I'm like, I want to do this in Sri Lanka, but I can't work with like Sri Lankan guys because. Like the traditional Sri Lankan guys, they they don't have the hustle that we have. But mm-hmm. then he's like, mm-hmm. okay, I have this team. Like I found these like great guys. I'm like, okay, let's get together and work. Like I I, yeah. I like that. Yeah, and I'm I'm so uh, I'm happy. Like last year, I was trying to leave the the country because you know because of the bombings and all of that, and I had mm-hmm. like a mentality shift because I started speaking to people who have uh, goals like this. I want to do things in this country. So now I'm completely flipped. Now I'm like, you know what? This is an amazing. Place. It's it's t- um, it's tough, bro. Because there's there's yeah. the system is built against against mm-hmm. it. Right? There's so many loopholes yeah. to go through. Like you. Even to get a simple thing like a business registration is so difficult. Oh like here, God. you just go online, yeah. like it's done. Like you, yeah. you, you, wa- you wanna, you, you know, you wanna, you wanna register a corporation, like max twenty four hours, yeah. it's done. You fill the forms, oh, upload, wow. it's done. Um, that's, that's why crazy. that's the only thing that like keeps me away from doing stuff in Sri Lanka is because mm. I don't have the right people. Otherwise, yeah. I want to like invest back or like you know give back mm. to the country. I have so many yeah. ideas like that could like work great. But sneaker time is not one of them. Sneaker time is not good for Sri Lanka. It's not yeah, a good no, model for definitely. Sri Lanka. And, like, we don't have not... the purchasing power to buy no. expensive sneakers. No, in, like, no, you cars. don't. So yeah, it could be like a budget version of it, but not a, you know. Mm. For example, Wish, right? Like the Wish app. Um, mm. I don't know if you know anything about Wish app. Yeah, I, yeah. A local yeah. version could like work so well on the Wish app. So, Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Let's not. Let's not. Let me not give too much away. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, so but there's, yeah, there's so many ideas that I um, mm. I, I want to do, and it's 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 so um, humbling, and uh, I'm so happy to see so many Sri Lankans who moved away from Sri Lanka. People in like mm. people in their twenties, people in their thirties. Now they're they're stable and they've built mm. something for themselves. Away from Sri Lanka, mm. but they want to give back to Sri Lanka, which is like yeah, yeah, yeah. amazing. But like my 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 message is to 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 like young people or people who are living in Sri Lanka is like when you get those opportunities from those people, like simple example, right? I wanted to find so I'm I'm into a little bit of music as well. I do a little bit of music. Yeah, no, I know. Hobby. I've I've um, yeah, I've seen I've seen uh, all of your stuff. <laughs> so I wanted I wanted a guy to so not Randy Chris because Randy Chris is 
I didn't oh, have Randy Chris worked in our company. Uh, totally. I, I didn't have said. for this project. I didn't have the Randy Chris budget, so right. I'm like, okay, right. I know how much he charges, so I don't have the right. Randy Chris budget for this project. Yeah. But I'm, I'm, I'm planning on working with him on a future project. Mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. I, I, yeah. so I, I messaged this guy who did a video for like another rapper. Okay, um, I'm not gonna name names. That's bad. Yeah, um, yeah. And and this guy sounded like I wanted to know his like you know. Before like asking his rates, like you want to like get to know a person, like you know if if they're on the same wavelength and if you can work together, right? Right. And this yeah, guy exactly, has yeah. like so much attitude, and you know like he wouldn't reply to like a DM, and then right. like I call him out in the comments, and then he's like, <laughs> okay, uh, and then he replies with like something stupid, and I'm mm. like, fuck you, I'm not gonna work with you. Like, yeah, if 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 I'm paying much, and I'm, I'm not asking shit for free, I pay for everything. Yeah, that, you know, right. everyone I yeah. work with, I pay pay them the right amount of money. Um. So, so my point is like when someone reaches out to you for an opportunity, fucking take it because you don't know yeah. where it leads. Like right. this guy yeah. could literally, because we are planning on doing like this whole animated, um, uh, animated unboxing kind of series for Sneaker Tab. Like right. we call it Sneaker Stories, where like you know we take like yeah like our fans, other people's sneaker stories, and creating like a little series with it. This right. guy could have, could have got paid like a lot of money to do oh, that oh wow that's uh, crazy but he lost the opportunity because i'm like fuck you you're not getting any of my money i mean yeah i recently did like um uh like a video about how to be a freelancer and like the main thing i said was just be a nice guy just just have common courtesy i just you know Bro, like uh, it, it it pains me so much people people don't have humility right and people mm. don't have empathy towards others like if someone like i i answer almost every dm that's not stupid right like if someone reaches out to me and say give me a business idea to make money i'm like no that is not the right question you should right. be asking right. there is so much i can educate people on right so i can't mm. reply to each dm and say okay this is not the right question so if you're following me on my social platforms i say this this is not the right question to us find your passion then see what's there in the world mm. then see what's missing in those in, in 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 you know on those platforms or on those products mm. and then then you think of something new. that's how you get inspired and that's how you yeah. um, that's some that's how you create something that's sustainable you're going to stick mm. to for a long time right right um, yes yeah, but people don't listen that's the main problem <laughs> people do not listen yeah i mean it's it's yeah it's it's like even like simple things as courtesy sometimes is 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 very hard to come by. I but I but a, I right now I'm feeling a little bit hopeful for this country because because mind the minds are changing like you know genera- like mm. one generation is moving out and a lot of people are finding influencers that you know start teaching this and they you know want to replicate it. So I'm I'm hopeful for the future and this has been an amazing experience for me and I'm so grateful that you took this meeting again and again. I still keep getting goosebumps. About this whole situation. <laughs> You're welcome, buddy. Anytime. Um, yeah, and uh, I'll definitely, you know, link all of your because uh, I know you have two two YouTube channels at the moment, right? Yes. Um, and uh, and I'll Kamaj probably TV. post this on you, you know one of my channels and link the traffic back to you so you get. Okay, awesome. I've, I've, I'm, I'm grateful. Um, You're welcome, buddy. Anytime.